Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Denisovans, Neanderthal DNA, and Melanesian people. This is kind of an addendum to my last episode, or one of my last episodes, within the last two episodes. The people in this area here of Melanesia, which includes the Maluku Islands, West Papua New Guinea, a little part of Indonesia, this part, the, the western part of the island, and uh, Solomon Islands, Fiji, New Caledonia, etc., north of what's now Australia. Um, we, I talked about the Hobbit people and in my last episode and how uh, Homo erectus through simulations uh, in, a, in a related study that Homo erectus came to this island and within 10,000 years, according to the simulation, they morphed into Hobbit people. And so um, taking this idea of this uh, genetic drift, shift, and then ultimately a, a branching out of a, a different type of humanity... Um, this here is examining the role Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA uh, played in the Melanesian uh, genome now. So one example of this, of Homo sapien, modern Homo sapiens uh, absorbing and ad uh, adapting some of these traits are in, in the Tibetan plateau. So the Tibetans there, they retain, the native Tibetans, retain this high altitude gene that they got from Denny Sovans who, who mo hundreds of thousands of years ago traveled across uh, the Tibetan plateau over here, over here, and then they made their way down all the way into um, the South China Seas area, the Southeast Asia here. Now, the reason why they think this is because there's a lot of Denny Sovan DNA here, as well as a couple of unknown hominin, Homo erectus, and of course the uh, Homo luzonensis and the other uh, uh, Floresiensis, the two hobbit uh, uh, types of people. So the Melanesians also dis display this type of inheritance. The evidence suggests that DNA is inherited from Neanderthals and Denisovans may have helped early Melanesian people survive in their island environment. Because remember, these weren't a, these weren't always islands. These, I mean, they were, but not the way they are now. They, they, large, they were largely contiguous. I think I have a photo here. Yeah, right here. Obviously, this is now. these are now a series of islands. Sulawesi was already sort of an island, but kind of connected to Sundaland. And then Sa Sahul was connected to this part of Melanesia here, which are now the Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea and stuff like that. So when during this transitionary period from continents to islands, there had to have been some sort of uh, adaptive feature in their genes, some sort of adaptive trait that they had. And so that's what they were examining in this, which was published in the journal Science, which is, if you don't know, one of the more prestigious and mainstream um, publications. Prior research has shown that modern humans have Neanderthal and any human DNA in their genes, the results of past interbreeding, uh, and that this has happened probably more than in more than one instance in probably within the past half a million years, so maybe five hundred thousand years down. Um, Melanesian people, for example, have the highest concentration of both Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA in their genes, which is very interesting. Um, why this is the case is still unclear. Uh, and if you guys have heard of um, Denisova Cave and the 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 young girl i think she was like they thought she was between 10 to 13 years old and she was a complete mix of a neanderthal and a denisovan perhaps those uh populations of people made their way down uh through what i was talking about earlier through um siberia all the way down to eventually sahuland or what's now australia again that's one of the theories um there, researchers with this new effort carried out an extensive genetic study of modern Melanesian people. So what they did was um, they extracted data from the Genome Diversity Project, which was a previous um, a huge project that they can, can uh, that they completed. Not this group, but a different group. So th they were just borrowing data from some, from someone else, and then they geno genotyped the copy number variants in 249 modern human genomes along with 72 great eight genomes so what cnvs are there um they include large batches of genetic bases so 
within these batches, they could find some sort of trace, some sort of evidence of either natural selection or some other uh, change or shift in their in their uh, genetic uh, makeup. Uh, unlike single nucleotide variants, which are a different um, different uh, strand of data or different type of data. Uh, the researchers report that they found instances of inherited CMVs from Denny Silvins and Neanderthals in modern Melanesian DNA that could be associated with adaptive selection. Again, kind of like the altitude gene. Um, this, this must have provided some benefit, although they don't know, they can't pinpoint exactly the benefit yet, but there must have been some sort of benefit for it to remain in Melanesian uh, genome for now, right, up until now. So... Um, th th obviously the study is ongoing, but they haven't been able to I uh, isolate the exact benefit. So some of these could be immunity, diet, cellular function, metabolism, even um, the, the kind of bacteria that in your stomach that you, that people tend to uh, foster their genetics. They, they have different uh, bacteria in there um, or they're inclined to in inhabit or they're, they're inclined to attract certain bacteria, if that makes sense. Um, metabolism is a big one. Melanesian people obviously have a certain metabolism, and they all looked a certain, a certain way. Um, but yeah, it should be one, one of, or more of these things. Um, more, the findings also suggest that early Melanesian people might have benefited from interbreeding with their early cousins in ways that might have helped them survive in their unique island environment. So... Again, it's very niche here, especially here. This is my, uh, Melanesia. Here. It's a niche environment, so that requires some sort of niche traits. You need to have to. You need to fit in here. You need to be able to get by easier than other populations of people in this specific scenario. So their genetics again pick up on that they're in a certain environment if you guys watched the last video about um hobbit people it according to thousands and thousands and thousands of simulations they ran based on these uh very specific parameters it didn't take longer it didn't take longer than ten thousand years to fully shift from one type of human to another type of human so this genetic uh inheritance thing is just like a very very minor version of that um, their, 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 their generations are going to adapt to their environment. That's basically what this, this, uh, um, and this, this article is getting at here. Um, researchers note that much more work is required to understand inherited CNVs and why they've remained present in DNA uh, up until the present. So the idea that they might have persisted because they were useful as precedent, of course, because obviously they talked about the Tibetans, staving off hypoxia, the high elevation gene. So again, I'm sure every single population that traces to a certain region, um, and genetics, the thing about genetics is you can't pinpoint exactly where a group emerged from. You can only pinpoint where they, the concentrated amount of people were at the given time. So obviously people are inquisitive. Human beings are inquisitive. We're curious. We'll move around. We'll explore. Um, but the, you can tell how long a group has been somewhere based on their adaptations, their genes. So again, the Tibetans, they have the high altitude gene. That that probably means they were living at high altitude for several several hundred generations, more than likely, in order for their genome to fully adapt in the way that it did. And again. If you're a hobbit, um, I don't know if there are any hobbits listening, <laughs> but if you're a hobbit, your people probably were living in that environment, according to the simulation, for at the very least 10,000 years. And in reality, the, the bones and the fossils and um, the, the data indicate that they've been there for 300,000 years or so. So that's more than enough time for Homo erectus to turn into a hobbit. So I hope there was no confusion about that. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this article. Let me know what you guys think about Melanesia, the Melanesian genome, um, the into uh, Australia or out of Australia theory, Denisovans and their migration pattern, Neander how Neanderthals play a role in there. Um, again, Denny it's very interesting because Melanesian people are pretty big and Denisovans were known to be a lot bigger than Neanderthals as well. And it's interesting that um, they have a lot, they have both DNA. So 
Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think. I think this is a very interesting article, and I'll talk to you guys later.